Bye. Good morning. It's Saturday and a little bit after nine. I was just reading and it caught me a little bit late here, but I have fixed the transmission problem so that we should be able to all hop on here. Um, yesterday, when I started the Psalms in Psalm one, all my settings were private and I didn't realize it. I couldn't figure out why no one was jumping on with me and I went back just now and realized that um, <clears throat> my computer had defaulted to private for all of my um, settings. I don't know why, <laughs> but that's why you didn't see it until I shared it later. So sorry about that confusion yesterday. But today is Saturday. It is uh, December 5th. Yesterday we went through Psalm 1 and we are going to go through all 150 Psalms. It could be about a six month journey, I think, um, well into May probably of 2021, Lord willing. And every day we'll try to take a Psalm unless it's Psalm 119. I don't think we can do that in a day. Um, I've actually been in Psalm 119 for weeks, but um, the Lord just uh, gave me the unction to do uh, go through the Psalms with you. So here we are. I've been posting um, other devotions as they come up from the past. I think we started in 2018 and uh, they've been coming up on my timeline. Maybe you've caught a few of those. I think right now, uh, two years ago, we were in the book of Revelation. This is a time when we just read through the scriptures together and pray and communicate a little bit through the chat window. And um, specifically, though, with the Psalms, we are going to be um, turning them into prayers. And um, I'm hoping that we're going to get really good at this and that you'll be inspired to pray from the word and to use the word as a um, the most powerful and effective prayer that you can pray. So um, we're going to read through each psalm and then we'll turn back around to the beginning of it and pray uh, through it. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that you'll join me in your living room, in your study, wherever you're at. Um, I hope that you'll feel uh, like you can speak out into your own home or wherever you are um, the things that you want to say to God through this chapter of Psalm 2. Okay, so let's get reading here. I'm so glad that we could do this. Okay, it says, Why do the nations assemble with commotion, uproar, and confusion of voices? Why do the people imagine, meditate upon, and devise an empty scheme? The kings of the earth take their places. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ. They say, let us break their bands of restraint asunder and cast their cords of control from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision and in supreme contempt, he mocks them. I'm in the amplified version, by the way. He speaks to them in his deep anger and troubles, terrifies and confounds them in his displeasure and fury. And he says, yet have I appointed, installed and placed my king firmly on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. This day I declare I have begotten you. Hebrews, uh, sorry, there's some... Um, mention of other scriptures there in my Bible. Hebrews 1 5, Hebrews 3 5 and 6, 2 Peter 1 17 and 18. Verse 8 Ask of me, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, you shall dash them in pieces like potter's ware. Now, therefore, O you kings, act wisely, be instructed and warned, O you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with reverent awe and worshipful fear. Rejoice and be in high spirits with trembling, lest you displease him. Kiss the son, 
pay homage to him in purity, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. For soon shall his wrath be kindled. O oh, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are all those who seek refuge and put their trust in him. All right, so that's the 12 verses of chapter two. And um, my intention is that we would, um, if you don't, maybe you already do this, but uh, just begin to practice putting these scriptures into prayer, forming them into your communication with the Lord, uh, reminding him of what his word says. Um, let's see how it goes today in chapter two. I will pray, you can pray with me. Um, and I um, will pray through the whole chapter and then we'll be done. All right. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your word. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Your word says in Psalm 2, why do the nations assemble with commotion, uproar and confusion of voices? And why do the people imagine, meditate upon and devise an empty scheme? Lord, we see this in the world today, Father. We see such a commotion. We see this as such a timely word, Lord, that there is an uproar and there is confusion of voices. God, why are the people imagining and meditating upon and devising empty schemes against you, Father? This whole chapter is wrapped up in seeing who you really are and seeing the, the glory and the might and the power that you have. And Father, we just say that these kings of the earth that are taking their places, the rulers that are taking counsel together against the Lord and, and the anointed one, your Christ, Jesus, um, as, they, as they devise things in their hearts against you, Lord, we ask that you would pull them down. You set up kings and you pull them down, Lord. We pray in agreement with you that the perfect representation of the Father, Jesus, John 10, 30 says that Jesus is the Christ. He is the representation of the Father. Anyone who is against you, we are against as well, Lord. If they are purposely against you and your word, God, we pray that you would pull these kings down, these rulers and leaders in the earth right now who are causing confusion, who are imagining vain things, empty schemes, Lord. We pray that that in verse three that they will um, we break their bands of restraint asunder. We cast their cords of control from us, Lord. Anywhere where Christians are being persecuted, anywhere where the body of Christ has been uh, mandated to be in lockdown and kept from one another to provide the necessary, the necessity, the resource of communion, the necessity and the resource of uh, having uh, commu communication, community, Lord. We pray, Father, that you burst open those doors, that this would be the week where the justice would roll down like a mighty river, God, that we would see, Father, that every um, cords of control that they have been trying to exercise over locking pastors up and um, all the different things that the government has tried, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would put these people, these officials who are allowing um, other um, businesses to be open, but putting the church at the bottom of the list to be reopened. Father, we pray that right now we declare the church is the head and not the tail, that she comes back up to the top of the list and that she will be reopened, and that each person that has put their faith and trust in you, each person who is just hanging on and needing encouragement, needing to go and sing some Christmas hymns this season with other believers, we pray, Father, that you would um, put an open door before them that no man can shut. And God, we see here in verse 4 that you say that you are sitting in heaven, you are laughing. It is the laughter of holiness that we see, God. You are not laughing at at the people, Lord, in, in disgust. You are laughing in holiness. You are laughing in your power. You are laughing. You are rolling in laughter in your might. You are laughing as if to say, who, who would ever think that I would be depressed? Who would ever think that I would be confused? Who would ever imagine that I am embarrassed at this point in history? No, it is I who sits 
in laughter because I'm in perfect peace. I'm in perfect assurance of what, am I, what I am doing and what I will accomplish. And so, Lord, we join you in that holy laughter. We join you in the uh, laughter that comes against the presumption of man that they would think that they have one up on you and your power and your might and your omniscience. Lord, we thank you for who you are, that you are on the throne, that you have never fallen off, nor will you ever fall off of the throne, that you are God Almighty. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have them in derision and in supreme contempt. You, you are mocking their ways. You are mocking their attempts. And you are getting ready to strike a blow against all unrighteousness and everything that is anti-Christ. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that we know this from your word here. And we come into agreement with you. I thank you, Jesus, that you have fully anointed, installed, and placed your king on the holy hill of Zion. We see you, Jesus, the perfect God-man, holy installed on the hill of Zion. And we, we say that you are good. And we declare the decree of the Lord that says to me that you are his son. Jesus is the son of God. And that this day he has begotten you. You are not a created being, Jesus. We say that you are begotten. And that's what a father does to a son, that you are his, you are the, second part of the trinity the holy spirit being the third part and the three of you together are one being one god that we serve and uphold in righteousness and truth and we thank you god that we can worship you and worship this perfect son that you have begotten lord and verse eight lord you told us we declare that you have said ask of me and i will give you the nations for your inheritance uttermost to the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession lord we take this beautiful promise and we ask for the nations we ask for the uttermost even to the islands into the sea we ask for the philippines and every island lord we ask and pray a covering over japan right now we are burdened for the country of japan with the high suicide rate there right now jesus we just say japan come into uh, peace come into peace we we strengthen the hands of the warrior pastors there the warrior missionaries there who are calling their nation back into peace and out of uh, subservience to an un, uh, unsatisfiable god lord we thank you jesus that you are the one and true god one true holy god and that you want the nation of japan they're just on my heart this week you want the nation of Japan to know that you love them, that you have only good for them, and that they can not be so uh, caught up. We break the, bind, the, the bondage of perfectionism in that country. We pray, Lord, that you would send your mercy and your peace to the people there. And um, thank you, Lord, that you will... We thank you that you will break these cruel bondages with a rod of iron and you'll dash into pieces like the potters wear everything that binds up your people all through the earth. We pray for the nations. We pray for those that are getting trained up to be missionaries right now who see the great harvest ahead of them, that the fields are white with harvest. We pray, Father for missionaries in the country of the United States as well. God Almighty, God Almighty, send missionaries into the universities, Lord, the great harvest of the universities of the United States of America. Lord, we also praise you and thank you, Father, um, that you are warning the kings of the earth to act wisely, to be instructed and warned the rulers of the earth. So we come into agreement with you, God, that they are warned today, that they are instructed, Holy Jesus, sending prophetic people into their midst right now, assembling them in quiet rooms, in private rooms, all over the earth, Lord, giving your prophetic voice, your word, a place into the hearts of men and women who are trembling under the hour that we are living, God, and that they would act in response to you, bowing their knee to you, Jesus. We choose to serve the Lord with reverent awe and worship with fear. 
We thank you that the kings of the earth will serve you, Lord, with reverent awe and worshipful fear. We praise you, Lord Jesus, that we can rejoice and be in high spirits with trembling. We thank you, God, that um, everything that is good, everything that is lasting is born out of reverential fear of the Lord. So we bring ourselves back to a place, a plumb line of reverential fear this morning. And we say that only you, God, only you are to be feared. Only you are to be trusted. Only you, Lord, we put our trust in you. And we kiss the sun. We pay homage to you in purity. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and be blessed and happy and fortunate um, as we seek our seek refuge in you and put our trust in you alone. So, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that that is your word for us today, to be happy, to be um, at peace, to be fortunate, even so that we are envied because of the peace that we carry, Lord. We choose to carry the peace of those who know that they are loved. And we choose to put our trust in you. We choose to love you. We choose to obey you and to stay in the reverential fear of you, God. We thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Saturday. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow, Sunday, 9 a.m. for Psalm 3. Bye-bye.